Adding a Smith machine to my home gym would be incredible, but they take up so much space. And as it currently stands, I don't have any extra room. So what if you can turn your squat rack into a Smith machine? I did exactly that. This is the VTS from Bulletproof Fitness. And now I have my own Smith machine inside my existing squat rack. Having a Smith machine, I think is incredible, but these do not come without their flaws. So let's get into it. Now look, before I dive into these, to all the free weight purists out there, I know that a Smith machine is not a necessity in a home gym. If you've seen any of my other videos on here before, you know that I am a lever arm stan. And a lot of people hate lever arms because they are unnecessary. I get it. The Smith machine, kind of in the same vein, but there's a time and a place for a Smith machine. And since I stopped going to a commercial gym, I've really missed specific Smith machine movements. Now, this is not going to be an everyday thing for me, but there are certain exercises like seated shoulder press, standing calf raises, things that I really like doing with a Smith machine specifically that I've missed. So I like having that option. And of course, when you're working out at home, safety is a concern for people. And a Smith machine is obviously safer than doing barbell work without a spotter. And also, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm getting older. I mean, a few days ago, I tweaked my back doing shrugs. I did a single shrug and I pulled my back and I couldn't move. Needless to say, a Smith machine is a welcome addition when you're nursing an injury. I think they're great. So listen, if you are a purist and love the free weights and hate everything else, stop watching this. This is not for you. For everybody else, let's talk about these. For basically as long as I've had a home gym, I have really missed having a Smith machine. And I wanted a solution like this for a very long time that just goes up and down the upright of your squat rack without any additional equipment. So now this company Bulletproof has finally come out with this. I pre-ordered this months ago. This right here is the VTS Lite. There is a regular VTS version and I will talk about the differences, but I wanna talk about some overall notes on this piece first. There's something to be said for buying knockoffs, which I've done in the past to save money, and buying something that's really thoughtful from a smaller company that truly cares. You could tell that the owner cares so much about the products that he is putting out there, and the way that this is designed and packaged when it came, you can tell that they care, they do not want this thing to be damaged, and they did not cut any corners, which I really, really appreciate. Now, obviously with this, it's working as a Smith machine, but there are a lot of uses for it. There's also, there's a little hook here that you can turn this into a trolley system. I don't quite know how it works, but there is a hook here and you would attach a weight horn to it. So this would double as a trolley system. There are these pieces on the side meant to take attachments. Now the attachments are not live yet. So I don't know what they're gonna be. Time will tell. I would imagine there's gonna be some kind of a leg press involved. And I mean, I don't really know what else you would do with the Smith machine. This is from the company that sells the isolator. If you've never seen that thing, it attaches to your rack. It is a leg extension, leg curl, but then can also do a million other things and they keep releasing different pieces to it. So it's kind of an all-in-one solution. And it looks like the company's trying to do that with these. For me, I found enough value in it just as a Smith machine. And that's what I'm gonna be reviewing it as. So this company sells the VTS Lite, which is what I have, and the VTS. These were 600 for the pair, and it's about 900 to get the regular VTS. They essentially serve the same purpose. They're both gonna turn your rack into a Smith machine, and they will also double as a trolley system. The VTS is much bulkier and heavier, and it's meant to take more attachments down the line. So I recently saw on Instagram, they tease that there is a hack squat attachment that they're working on. The thing is, huge. If I set up a hack squat on a single post, I'm going to kind of be doing a, uh, you know, nobody wants that. So that's not going to work for me, but I saw them tease that it is huge. It is the reason why the VTS has to be so bulky. If I was putting it on the outside posts, maybe I can afford it to be a little bit bulkier, but my front posts are housing my lever arms and those are there permanently. So I knew it was going to sit here and I have the cables on the backside. So if you have something behind your rack, maybe even the wall, if you're up against the wall, check out the measurements on their website because the VTS is much bulkier. The reason the regular VTS is so much bulkier is because there are rollers on all all four sides. This one has rollers on the front and the back. It's super smooth. With just the rollers on the front and the back, 
It works great as a Smith machine, but it has rollers on the side because the VTS is also meant to do unilateral movements, meaning you can attach just a single handle into each of these. And a lot of people are doing single arm exercises. I don't need that because again, I use my lever arms. The lever arms work great for unilateral movements. You can't use a single handle on these because without the side rollers, it will be pulling and it's one, not gonna be a smooth movement and two, you risk damaging the trolley. So if you want unilateral movements, if you want the ability to add whatever crazy attachments are coming down the line, the VTS will be the way to go. Otherwise, the VTS Lite, what I have, it'll save you $300. And my uprights are three by three. These are designed to fit on two by two, two by three, or three by three. And the latch hooks, they will fit going into either five eighths of an inch hole, which is what I have, or one inch holes, or there is an option. You can use pins or hitch pins, but I'm gonna get into that in a minute. And I almost forgot, if you have something like the Aries where there is already a cable system built into your rack, they've put on their website that this does work alongside that. If you never wanna put your trolley all the way to the bottom, maybe that works. And likewise, if you never need to have your Smith machine all the way to the top, maybe that works, but that is not gonna be an ideal solution. If you do have something like that where the cable trolley is built in, just keep that in mind. You really wanna have an empty upright to be able to move it up and down. Just my two cents. What I love about this is that right now they are sitting at the bottom of my rack and I can do any free weight exercises I want without them getting in the way. So if I wanna do barbell curls inside my squat rack, which I can because I have a home gym and no one could tell me not to, I can do what I gotta do and they're not gonna get in the way, which is awesome. If I'm benching, I'll set my J hooks up at the bottom. So that way, if I am to fail and I'm not able to rack the Smith machine, the bar, then those will act as the safety at the bottom and then these will just sit right on the J hooks. So I think having an extra pair will be very beneficial for you. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take your barbell and you're gonna slide it right in. Now these are designed with rollers on the inside. So that way when it is covered, you can turn it, which is obviously very important because with the Smith machine, you have to do the latches. That's the whole point of a Smith machine. And then you just lock it in. Now these locks are kind of a pain in the sense that you kind of have to guess on how tight they should be. If they're too tight, your bar is not gonna spin. And if they're too loose, your bar is gonna spin too freely. So it needs to be tight, but not too tight. And the way that these bolts are, you're kind of just playing a guessing game. That honestly took me the longest, but otherwise, like I'm locked in right now. So if I want to just use this as a Smith machine, I'm good to go already. If I was doing say bent over rows, I don't have to do anything else. I'm good to go. There are a lot of different settings you can play with here. You can actually move this so it can take a fatter bar. So if you have a thick barbell or you have a specialty bar, you can fit that in here and you can adjust it so it fits. I was hoping I could use my multi-grip bar. It turns out it is not the right length. So it's not gonna work, which is a bummer. And then we have our latch hooks. So they send two different versions. One of them's bigger, one of them's smaller. So all you do, you put this over the bar. You'll wanna put it into the hole. So that way you can line it up. And then these just tighten right on the bar. All right, there's one. And then obviously if you put your J hooks at the bottom, then you have built-in safeties and it's that easy. And then taking it apart is just as simple. I obviously went through that a little bit slowly. So if you're worried that it's gonna be cumbersome and it's gonna add time to your workout, it's not at all. You just throw the bar in, tighten a couple things and you're good to go. I think everybody knows what you can do with the Smith machine. You could basically do everything you could do with the barbell. It's just on a fixed track. But before I get into the specifics of what I like and more importantly, what I don't like about these, I wanna just show you my favorite uses for these because if you're on the fence about getting a Smith machine, maybe you don't see the value. So these are my favorite exercises for it. Standing calf raises have always been one of my favorite things to do on a Smith machine. I was worried that I wouldn't have the clearance. This works just fine. And I actually ditched my calf raise machine made some more room because now I could exclusively use this, which has always been something I've loved with the Smith machine. And as much as I would love to have a hack squat machine in my home gym, there's just no space for it. Having a Smith machine really opens up a lot of possibilities. It's not quite the same as a hack squat, 
but being able to put your feet forward and have it act like a hack squat, a really nice movement and a nice way to switch it up from traditional squats. One exercise that I hate setting up in my home gym is hip thrusts. But with the Smith machine, I find it significantly easier. It's much easier with the Smith machine to have it racked, get underneath it that way versus having the bar on the ground and having to kind of slither your way underneath it. So hip thrust now, it's something I've been avoiding for a very long time just because it's such a pain to set up. But with the Smith machine, I can see doing these weekly. And I think that's probably gonna be where I get some of the best value out of this. And probably my single favorite way to use a Smith machine has always been incline bench press. Incline is always one of those things that when I'm doing it with free weights, I have a tough time racking it successfully. You kind of are going behind your head and the way that your body is, it's just never a comfortable way to re-rack it. With the Smith machine, obviously significantly easier. That's always been my favorite use of a Smith machine, something I've missed a ton. So something I really like doing now. And of course, there are bent over rows. Obviously a ton of different stuff you can do back wise. I like bent over rows in pretty much any form. So this is not gonna be something I do exclusively with the Smith machine, but a nice option. So far, we've pretty much talked about all the positives of this. It's very easy to set up. It's very smooth. I have no issues with this. It's not scratching up the rack. It is designed beautifully. I can use my own barbell. I mean, it's mostly all positives, there are negatives. One thing that's worth pointing out that's not specific to the VTS, just Smith machines in general, the bar is generally really light. Smith machines, they vary in weight. It can be 20 pounds, 15 pounds, 30 pounds, but it's generally lighter than a 45 pound barbell. It is not super easy if you wanna adjust it all the way to the top. Now, I think for the majority of people, especially people with a home gym, they could handle a barbell, but that's just something to keep in mind that it is noticeably heavier. For whatever stupid reason, didn't cross my mind until I tried to do shoulder press. An exercise I've always really liked with the Smith machine, I would sit perpendicular or parallel with the bar, whatever, I'm facing the bar, so I guess parallel. And I would do single arm ugh, shoulder press. That's not easy. And when the Smith machine is 20 pounds, I could rep that out. When it's 45 pounds, that's tough to do. So I always liked doing those, not the end of the world, but something to note that adjusting it and repositioning it, not quite as easy as a Smith machine you are used to. I'll admit that that's kind of nitpicky. The one negative that I think is kind of a big deal is the way this latch hook functions. When you go heavy, it does not feel safe latching it this way. Now, these holes are 5 eighths of an inch. If you have one inch holes, I think that's gonna make a world of difference and probably wouldn't be an issue for you. 5 eighths of an inch, you have to get it just right. So when you are under the bar, if you're doing some kind of bench press, it is tough to get it just right. Now, having the option of all these holes on the rack where you can rack it at any point is very appealing. But when you have weight on here, and you kind of miss and then slide around, it is not that easy to just loop right into one of the holes. It's been something that I've been struggling with because two things. One, because this is not an actual Smith machine on a dedicated track, there's a little bit of wobble to the bar. Now it's not bad, it's still very smooth. If your bar is not perfectly straight, if there is a little tilt on one side, it tilts the latch hooks just enough and because you have to be precise on these holes, you then start hitting the rack and you are not able to rack it. So unless this is perfectly straight, I keep missing. And if you're going heavy, that's gonna be a huge problem. The other thing is that my setup, it's nice, but it's not perfect. And what I mean is I have a bolt down rack, which I didn't bolt down because it's plenty sturdy. I have my lever arms, I have my cables on the back with a full weight stack. So. This is not going anywhere, but sometimes it can shift a tiny, tiny bit. If you have a bolt down rack, maybe you've noticed that sometimes the legs are perfectly straight. Sometimes they bow out a tiny bit or they start coming in a little bit. So because that is the case with mine right now at the bottom here, I can latch right into the holes, no problem. But when I come to the top, that same positioning does not work. And I literally cannot rack this unless I push 
and manually uh, put those in. So if I want to do squats, for example, I'm going to have to take these latch hooks off and reposition them to work up top because my rack does bow out the tiniest like millimeter, but it's enough that it will not work in that hole. They do sell a version that allows you to put your pin through. You would set it up the same exact way. It just curves and it goes over the latch hook. The one downside to that, when I squat, I like to position my J hooks a little bit lower. I don't wanna have to go tippy toes to rack it. So I generally start lower, which is how this is. And then if I get under it because the pins are in the rack, when I go to stand, now I'm hitting the pins because that's where I want to latch onto, but then I can't fully extend past it because obviously that is getting in the way. I think in the grand scheme of things, if you have one inch holes, don't worry about it. I think that these hooks are going to work just fine. If you have five eighths of an inch holes, this is not working for me. So I think I'm gonna go back on the website and buy the version for the latch hooks. I think that's a safer option. So if you have smaller hole sizing, I don't recommend these. I've been going really light with this and it's still been an issue. If you're planning on going heavy, it's just not gonna work. So I would go the hitch pin route personally to each their own, but yeah, I'm probably gonna end up buying the hitch pin version. All in all, I love these. I'm gonna get so much use out of this. I'm excited to see what attachments are coming down the road. Is it worth $600? I mean, my rack was $600. Is this worth the price of a rack? Honestly, I think so. Everyone's gonna feel differently. Let me know what you think, if you think that this is worth it or not, and if you're gonna pick these up for yourself. I'd love to hear your thoughts, especially maybe you have these. Let me know what you guys think of these. <sighs> this is nice. It's just, it's so smooth. Something so satisfying about when it's smooth and quiet. Yeah, I love these. So I recommend them, but let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer. I'm no expert. I've only had these for a week, but so far so good. All right. See you next time.